welcome back to the HNT Hub. This device right here piques your interest. Stay tuned for the video and the three topics I'll be discussing that you might want to know about the Helium Network. As always, thank you for watching. I want to talk to you about the Dragino LPS8. This unit right here from Dragino. They are a LoRaWAN or IoT company that develops sensors and hotspots as well. They have a light hotspot on the way in approval with DY and Helium, so that will be in the near future when light hotspots are a thing, so keep a lookout for Dragino and them releasing their light hotspot. Now, this unit is a cause for caution as it is a data-only hotspot unit. This unit is only meant for essentially developers, more or less. I mean, you could have fun if you're just trying to tinker with the, the Helium network. Uh, just comes with the gateway, your standard uh, wall adapter, a USB-C plug, and a, I'm going to say 2.8 or so, or somewhere around there, 2.3 to 2.8 dBi antenna. Here on this unit currently, I was testing a 5 dBi just to see how far I could potentially put sensors in my area to utilize them. Now, as I mentioned, this unit is a cause for caution because of the scalpers. The scalpers specifically uh, are reselling this unit as a light hotspot. So this is not a light hotspot. That, that needs to be first and foremost with this. If you are under the impression this is a light hotspot, that is incorrect. Whoever is telling you that is incorrect. This is a data-only hotspot. Now, to be fair, earlier on, the Helium Network was mentioning this in the light hotspot um, category, but that was just kind of mislabeling at the time before all this started to develop in its full phase of where we're now coming into uh, quarter one and near the end of quarter one, actual light hotspots should be a thing. So you see these units on eBay or any other uh, reselling area, do not buy these. This is what the box looks like. This is what the unit looks like, obviously. Uh, it's just a simple LoRaWAN gateway that can be onboarded through a system called Gateway RS. So this is also not plug and play, as I mentioned. It's for developers, more or less. But great way to tinker, great way to learn how to use the network, in my personal opinion. Uh, you can get them for about 150 bucks, as going back to that cause for caution note. Uh, these are not $300 units. These are not you know, even $200 units. You can get them for about 150 USD from a shop like Robot Shop um, or Tindy, for instance. Um, they do sell these. Uh, Rokeland, I believe, has a few units left. I will put the link in the description for those. Most providers are actually sold out of these as they are great development tools. So just uh, keep in mind that this is a data-only hotspot. And just for a little show and tell, and since nobody else on YouTube seems to use these, or have them plugged in for that matter. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this system via the USB-C PoE splitter here. And I have my inverter behind my system. Dragino has a really great dashboard for this as well. Uh, super easy to use and update firmware through. Uh, highly recommended if you're into developing on the Helium network to get this specific unit. Moving right along, I do want to talk about the next topic, the Glamos Walker. Glamos Walker is known as a helium mapping device, or it's just a LoRaWAN coverage testing tool. Very easy to use, super easy user interface. I'm not sure, I haven't been able to get the uh, screen viewable most of the times, but essentially uh, it would be a just a general menu allowing you to send signals. So you can send multi, so, uh, you can get the GPS connection going. It might actually pop up in a second here, the blue light, or I'll actually send a signal through it. So I'm going to go to multi-signals, and I'll just go ahead and do a loop. So that way it will send 10 transmissions, one after the other, in a wave of events. So once I send that signal, as you can see, the, uh, the GPS is already attached, and that's the blue LED light. Like I said, pretty pretty bad uh, camera or the screen on this is just the brightness, I think, is an issue. It is actually a very bright screen, which is nice. It's kind of coming in there, but it's just a simple menu showing you are sending actual signals. 
and then towards the end it will show the valid the validity of those connections with RSSI uh, values to help validate the uh, connection between this device and the hotspot. So you can utilize it with something like this, a developer tool, to test how far, that's what I've been doing, this range of a LoRaWAN gateway or a date-only hotspot will actually um, have connection. This tool is extremely important for a few different things. What's really great about this device, first and foremost, is your confirming the connection on your antenna. So by sending a signal from this, your antenna receives that signal and then this accepts that signal from the antenna and confirms and validates its connectivity. So that is a big one that a lot of people always ask me and others as well, how can I test my antenna to know if it's working? You can use stuff like voltmeters, I think I'm not too adept with that, I'm not like an electrician by any means, but this is a great way to help confirm the antenna is active, it is working, it's accepting the signal. You can view these results on the page or the system Helium console to validate those connections. And you can also view the RSSI connections that you saw on your device in the console as well. Uh, Glamos does have an app similar to this. It's glamos.app. Uh, you get a free year of service with a purchase of device and it, it pretty much gives all those same details and uh, a few more bonus features as well that uh, including a line a really powerful line of sight tool um, that is a really nice clean user interface to uh, match with your Glamos device. The second most important, in my opinion, uh, checker or way to confirm things with this tool is that your hotspot is online. Obviously, if your antenna is connected and it's receiving a signal, then let's be real at that point, you can more or less confirm your hotspot, right, is online and valid. And the third most important thing to use this tool for is actually testing blockchain validity. Like, okay, if I send a signal to this device right here, or rather even a um, let's imagine this is the sensor that I'm using and this sensor let's pretend it's not even a mapper sends the signal to this device and that blockchain data is going through through the helium console that's helping confirm the blockchain is active now keep in mind that can always be different because the ETL can go down the the console router can go down a few other things can go out while blockchain data can still go through just so keep that in mind it's not a for sure for sure but it is probably the best way to confirm, hey, blockchain's active, there's data packets going through to my device. And as I just mentioned, you know, pretend this isn't a mapper because you can get this, this same effect with a actual sensor using it on the network. For instance, a uh, Dragino temperature and humidity sensor, Link in the description. which are great for inside your enclosures, uh, which would be outdoors, of course, to help confirm the temperature inside the enclosure and the humidity in there making sure there's not any crazy fluctuations. Uh, my buddy over at 30 Minute Crypto, check out his channel, I'll put the link in the description. He's got some awesome videos. He turned me on to that technique. I've always wanted to get into it, but he said it's in all his installs now. He only uses that uh, as a means of tracking temperature and humidity inside the enclosures. So great devices here, the Dragino LPS8 and the Glamos Walker. As I mentioned, these are the topics we're going over. And the last topic of discussion today was actually firmware and OTAs, and this kind of goes into that effect, is upgrading your SD card to a proper high endurance, or yeah, you can go ahead and get an extreme version, but these are just more durable SD cards, literally to take on more data and process more data in a rapid rate and potentially have more longevity than uh, in this instance I'm referring to the rack SD card. So highly recommended if you have a rack of any way, shape, or form, V.1, V.15, V2, um, that you do upgrade your SD card. There's a little caveat there. If you got the rack V.1, make sure you back up that SD card. You have to clone that SD card that was originally in there before you do any firmware updates. Uh, so this technique or this um, method to doing this was one of the users in the rack discord he's the rack og of the server wtp he was i believe more or less the first one in there uh, bfg neil is also a heavy promoter of doing this check out his channel i'll put the link in the description he's a 
very prominent member in the community. Great advice always coming from him. And then uh, he's actually a uh, Rackstar OG as well. So if you're not in the Rackstar server, I'll put a link um, to that Discord, which is the actual Rack Wireless Discord. It's just called Rackstars. Uh, so great server, lots of information there. I'm actually pretty active in there myself. Uh, you'll see me just Devo. Um, but specifically, that's a great recommendation is to upgrade. I think the next one I'm going to try out uh, when I replace or swap out an SD card is this high endurance one, as this was specifically recommended by WTP in the Rackstars Discord. And on the notion of firmware specifically, I wanted to mention what the difference is between an OTA and actual helium firmware so actual helium firmware comes straight from helium is more or less developed kind of with rack uh, they developed the helium firmware directly on a rack as that was kind of the first streamline hotspot now otas what is an ota and why do otas happen so much an ota is just more or less your helium firmware wrapped up in a pretty bow and sent to your hotspot that's the ota the OTA is going to your hotspot directly from the hotspot's maker. So let's say uh, SenseCap M1, that, that's coming directly from Seed. Or Bobcat, obviously, is coming directly from Bobcat as well. Now keep in mind, some OTAs are released maker-only specifics to uh, fix bugs or firmware issues in themselves. And Bobcat is known to have a lot. I will definitely say that there's sure do have their mishaps but you got to remember how many units they're dealing with the most on the network i can't even i lost count of how many but it's like one third of the network is bobcats so of course there's going to be anomalies and firmware issues within that so keep in mind that your helium firmware is separate from your ota and all the ota is is just helium firmware made specifically for your hotspot so whenever there's an ota and people complain it's kind of like you're just saying okay why is helium updating my hotspot well i wonder why helium is updating your hotspot right that's it's probably a good thing i usually i'm not a huge fan of updates on some uh, some things phones and computers sometimes but uh i will say for the helium network it's essential it's only a two-year-old network we have to update our hotspots with the blockchain simple as that so very important to know the differences between helium firmware and an ota as they are different but they are also practically one and the same unless like i said it's maker specific you know as in the maker of the hotspot pushes out an ota to help fix a specific issue i hope you enjoyed today's knowledge check on the helium network be sure to check out all the things i mentioned in the video i will put all the, the links down there thanks for watching today hnt hub signing out May your H&T earnings be forever strong.